LIM F1H2O World Championship was back in Liuzhou for the 21st Grand Prix of China, round four of the 2015 season. Located in Guangxi Province, Liuzhou is one of the most beautiful and picturesque corners of China. The semi-tropical climate provides for a lush, green countryside that is dotted with iconic karsts through which weaves the mighty Liu River, along which you'll find verdant parks, fishermen, and age-old temples marking a proud and illustrious 5,000-year history. But Liuzhou is no sleepy countryside town. This is a bustling, dynamic, modern city of over a million people. The city is alive 24 hours, and downtown Liuzhou is a kaleidoscope of colors, lights, and skyscrapers. The population is young, and there are cafes, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs everywhere. And they like their motorsports. For over two decades, China has hosted the UIM F1H2O World Championship as tens of thousands once again turn out to watch the world's fastest and most exciting race on water. Locals have extra reason to cheer this year with CTIC China's Philip Xiap racing as the defending world champion here in the team's home waters. Now let's see what happened in the last round. Porto, Portugal was also a river race. In qualifying, Class 1 legend Nader Benhendi made a shaky start to his F1 debut for victory team, flipping over and crashing out. Sammy Celio was back in fine form as he went out and napped pole position in superb style, handling his machine flawlessly to beat Philip Schiap. He would be starting in prime position to claim his first win in a long time. The race got underway in a festival atmosphere. It was a tight drag race to the commitment boy, with Celio maintaining his lead, but with Shiap breathing down his neck the whole way. It was all Celio could do to hold on, but Shiap's speed was unstoppable, and he eventually overtook Celio to take command of the race. Celio's woes continued as a controversial scrape with Alex Carella sent the fin flying, crashing out of the race and putting a serious dent in his title hopes for 2015. Celio was unhurt, but he was not happy. At the restart, Schiap fended off a spirited challenge from Alex Carella, the Frenchman keeping his lead. Eric Stark of Emirates team overtook Carella to move into second position after a thrilling give and take with the Italian with the Swedish rookie getting the better of the three-time world champion. Carella gave it his all, nearly losing control of his boat, but he managed to keep it on the water and held on for a much-needed podium. Schiap won his first race of the year, Eric Stark was runner-up, and Alex Carella, who came third, got a talking to from Celio. That brought Schiap a step closer to defending his world title, Although Torrente was still the world standings leader going into China, with Al Rubayan, Stark, and Anderson all in the running.
there were 18 drivers from 12 countries and 9 teams who lined up for the 2015 Grand Prix of China. All eyes were of course on the home team, CTIC China, and its defending world champion, Philip Schiap. The Frenchman is currently second in the world standings, and he and his teammate, Zhang Ziwei, want to win one for the locals here on home waters. The man who stands in Schiap's path is American prodigy, Sean Torrente. He started the year off with a win, but his lead atop the world standings has been cut down to just one slender point. He decided not to move into a new, more built boat, opting instead for the weathered but trusty Baba he's been racing for the last two Grand Prix. So I just ran it now in the worst conditions of the session, and we were really good, and the boat handles really, really good, and it's still fast, so um, I'm pretty excited. We had engine issues, so the first lap that I took with this one, I think it's our last bullet, I was uh, a little nervous, but uh, it survived. We're gonna put a little more time on it right now, so we're ready for uh, qualifying. At the end of the year, you need every point. All you need is one point to win the championship. So we just fight all day. We fight all day, all year for every single point we can get. We scratch, we claw, we do whatever it's got to take. But the man everyone wants to beat here is Alex Carella of Team Abu Dhabi. He is the three-time defending China Grand Prix champion, and nobody has beaten him here since 2011. He's tied for sixth on points going into this race, and he knows he needs a big result here. Today is the last chance, I think. Oh, I win this weekend, oh, the chance for the championship is over. So we are uh, putting all together for try to be, uh, to take the win here. Or oh, we know that it will be almost impossible to win the championship. So we stay quiet. We work well. Enter Sammy Celio. The two-time world champion is yet to win in China, and he wants this to be his year. He's had a bad season so far compounded by an accident last race in Porto, where a very close encounter with Carella cost him a podium. What happened the previous race, I I'm really cannot say it went like following the rules. So, But I, I need to say when I'm in the boat and I close the canopies, it, it, luckily it's not in my mind there. I just focusing my job and uh, keep pushing hard like always. Emirates team's Eric Stark is tied for third with Al Rubayan and he's determined to continue his sensational entry into F1 H2O. You know, this is a really important race for me. I, I need to be on the podium. Uh, it's just nine points up to Sean, who is the leader. So, uh, you know, three races left and a lot of thing can happen. So now it's just up to me to, to try to deliver. So I hope I can do it and uh, I believe I can, so. But let's not count out an illustrious former champion who has thrived in China Corella's Team Abu Dhabi teammate and two-time China Grand Prix champion, Daniel Kamzi. He joined the season last race, and he's ready to shake things up. It's a hell of a field. The circuit in Luzhou is once again a six-pin course with five left-handers and one right-hander a lap length of 2,000 meters on tricky river conditions where winds and currents can be a big factor. Qualifying would determine pole position and the starting lineup for the race with the field of drivers being reduced to 12 after Q1 and then down to the last six in Q2, after which there would be the usual Q3 shootout. But things were off to a shaky start with weather conditions deteriorating as high winds made for a tricky 20 minutes in Q1. It's very tight up there, so you know, the qualification will be interesting, but uh, difficult if the wind keep going like this. Every qualifying is a uh, hard condition, not like uh, Avion or Doha, but uh, we have rough. We do my best for qualifying, sure. It was a uh, flood this morning a little bit, and now it changed completely 100%. Windy, rough water. Try to do my best, what I can do. Enough crashes, sorry. In Q1, it was a disappointing session from veteran Francesco Cantando of Motorglass F1 team, who was unable to find the speed he needed on the choppy course. Also frustration from Moritz Stromoy, a former pole position winner. 
she didn't make the cut and would start the race in 14th position. Her EMIC teammate, Christophe Larigo, was also unable to proceed to Q2. There was a big battle between two youngsters, Jesper Fors of Team Sweden and Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba Racing. Both youngsters had been on an upward graph of late, but this time Jesper Fors would just get the better of Roms, moving into Q2. Also out in Q1 were Nader Bin Hendy of Victory Team in just his second ever Grand Prix and Bernd Enzenhofer of Motorglass F1. The fastest man on the water in Q1 was Tani Al Kamzi, a former two-time champion in China who knows this course and these river conditions very well. Second fastest was Yusuf Al Rubayan of F1 GC Atlantic team. In Q2, with conditions worsening by the minute, there was high drama right from the get-go as young Eric Stark of Emirates team had a harrowing crash on the south side of the circuit on his very first lap. Stark was taken to hospital, having escaped with minor injuries, but his Baba boat was totaled. The session was restarted with 11 boats left on the water. Al Kamzi was again posting some great times in tough conditions, as was Al Rubayan. But defending world champion Philip Schiap upped his game in Q2, posting the fastest time. In fourth was Sammy Celio. Struggling in ninth was a three-time defending China Grand Prix champion Alex Corella. Big frustration for his former teammate Sean Torrente, who struggled to return to the pontoon for repairs after a breakdown. Conditions worsened further, and yet another huge incident. This time, it was Zhong Ziwei of CTIC China, barrel rolling as he came out of turn number three. Officials decided enough was enough. Conditions were not suitable to go on. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. You know, when I exit the turn, and just there is a big, on the wave. big wave, yeah. and I fall in the hole, and then it and happened too fast. And yeah. We cancel the, the shootout, so all the drivers have enough time in the laps to be qualified, and uh, we never do the, the shootout on the racing day because it's a short time for the race. It's a completely different setup. It can compromise the the racing for uh, for uh, some drivers. So with Q3 cancelled, pole position went to Shiap, who was fastest when the session ended. In second position, Al Kamzi, then Al Rubayan. Celio, and another former champion, Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden, in fifth. Teams and drivers got a chance to leave a grueling day's racing behind them as they were treated to a sumptuous gala dinner party by their Chinese hosts with music and shows that segued on to a night of partying and dancing. Conditions had improved since qualifying as the opening ceremony kicked off the 21st Grand Prix of China. All eyes were on CTIC China world champion Philip Xiap. With a whole nation behind him, he and his team were under pressure to win one for the locals here. Stark was back from the hospital to see off the other pilots, but he would not be racing. But I just remember the boat uh, hit the wave and took some air. And then I think I nose dive it. Um, then I had some small memories of the Osprey trying to get me out because I was a little bit stuck in the boat. I get a little bit wound in my hand, but um, I will be ready for next race. I believe I'm starting ninth, and uh, I expect to be in third by about lap 10, hopefully. And then from there, we'll see what happens. The competition is fierce, but these racers know what it takes to race out there and their rivalries are matched only by the respect they share for one another. The starting grid, Shiap in pole. Behind him is Al Kamzi, revved up and looking for a career third China Grand Prix title. Anderson starts in fifth. Moritz Stromoy has her work cut out for her, starting back in 13th. 
As the seconds tick away, nerves are taut in anticipation of one of the most intense moments in world motorsport racing, that 100 meter drag race to an F1 commitment boy. The lights go out, the race is on. Shep has a great start, already opening a huge lead over Al Kamzi as the F1 fleet fly to the commitment buoy. Stromoy also has a superb start, trying to shoot up the field. Shep leaves the field in his wake, his more built Raptor is incredibly fast. Stromoy continues to move up the field, passing Sean Torrente and Jesper Fors as she does a daring cut in on the inside. Shep opens his lead over Al Kamzi in second, with Al Rubai on third, and Celio fourth. Anderson chasing on the inside, with Benevente in sixth. Al Rubayan is on the outside of Al Kamzi, trying to move up on the Team Abu Dhabi driver. Al Hamali in seventh makes a move on Benevente, trying to catch the Portuguese driver. He keeps pressing and breaks to the inside, but to no avail. Behind Al Hamali, Sean Torrente gives chase to Moritz Stromoy trying to reclaim his position from the Norwegian driver, but Alex Corella storms in on the yellow right-hander to overtake his former teammate. In the lead, Shiap is immaculate, widening his dominance further with the kinds of speed the other drivers can only dream of. Meanwhile, Al Hamali is caught up with Benevente, the Emirates team driver overhauling him here to move up into the top six. At the end of lap one of 45, Shep has already opened a five second lead over Al Kamzi. Sami Celio now closing in on Al Rubayan, the 2007 and 2010 world champion is neck and neck with the Kuwaiti as they head toward the yellow right-hander, Celio desperate to reverse his ill fortune here in China. Celio is nudging ahead of Al Rubayan around the right-hander, Celio has the speed to hold on, and there it is, Sami Celio moves into third place, now setting his sights on Tani Alcamzi. There's more drama at the back as Sean Torrente ups his game to move up on Moritz Stromoy, and Torrente does it. He drops Stromoy back a spot. Former China Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando is trying to come up with something extra to at least move up into the top 10. Alex Carella on the inside overtakes Duarte Benevente with Sean Torrente coming up behind them followed by Stromoy and then Cantando pushing for the top 10. She up in the lead, seemingly unstoppable as he pursues his second Grand Prix win of the year after winning the last one in Porto. Further back, a titanic battle unfolds between 2009 China Grand Prix champion Jonas Anderson and Ahmed Al Hamali, who's trying to catch the Swede. He holds on and tries to shoo Al Hamali away, eventually speeding away from the Emirati. Joining in the battle between Anderson and Al Hamali is Alex Carella as the three advance virtually side by side from the yellow boy. But Al Hamali shuts Carella out there in disdainful fashion. In all the spray and confusion, Benevente sneaks back up to overtake Carella and reclaim the spot he lost to the Team Abu Dhabi driver. But the three-time defending China champion is having none of it, and he quickly pulls Benevente back down the field. Carella then sets his sights on Ahmed Al Hamali as the two lock horns on the straight. Carella has it. He bumps Al Hamali down and continues his surge up the ranks. Torrente adds insult to injury to also pass Al Hamali as Torrente then pursues Carella. Carella now back on track to make his way up the field, but there's a lot of laps yet for the Italian to pursue a defense of his title. In front of Carella now, another former winner here, Jonas Anderson. The Swede is prone to mechanical problems, but if he can finish a race, he's usually up there with the best of them. Problems for Corella. His engine gives. His team can't believe it. What a blow. Just four laps in. That is a sad sight. And it means we will have a new champion in China for the first time since 2011. But the danger isn't over for Anderson, who now has Torrente giving hot pursuit in the Blue Baba victory boat. Meanwhile, in second position, Team Abu Dhabi's Dani Al Kamzi is putting in a fine race in his second Grand Prix of the year. Let's have another look at the start of the race. 
The boats roar off the start pontoon as Schiap takes command right from the outset. Great start also from Maritz Stromoy. Let's look at her meteoric takeoff. There she's already said bye-bye to the likes of Cantando. Oh, we see Al Rubayan and Celio tussling as they come around the commitment buoy. Al Rubayan forcing the Finnish driver off to the side. Now back to the action. With six laps gone, Schiap extends his comfortable lead to over eight seconds over Al Kamzi. Celio in third, more than 10 seconds behind the lead boat. Stromoy is back in ninth, trying to find some way to move up on Benevente and Al Hamali. Behind the fin, a battle heats up as Torrente nudges closer and closer to Anderson. Two racers with very similar styles. Both are aggressive, all or nothing drivers, and this promises to be a good duel. Back in 13th position, a dogfight between CTIC China's Zhang Ziwei and EMIC driver Christoph Larigo as a locals route for the only Chinese driver on the F1 Tour. Torrente now closes right in on Anderson and he's virtually neck and neck with a red Mulgard boat as the Swede does everything he can to keep Torrente off his tail. Torrente goes wide, trying to find some extra speed on the clearer waters outside as he follows a wide arc around Anderson. The tactic seems to pay off, and Torrente does it. Torrente pips Anderson to move up a spot in his quest for the top three. Cantando is a 12-time Grand Prix winner, but this was not his day. He's out in lap 12. And the misfortune continues through the field as Al Hamili retires from yet another race this year. Yet more frustration for Emirates team manager Scott Gilman. As you can see there, Shiap with a comfortable six second cushion on Al Kamzi, who in turn has a more than two and a half second advantage on Celio in third. Benevente in seventh, Stromoy eighth, Force ninth, and then it's Roms, Zhong, and Larigo. Behind Anderson, Stromoy overhauls Benevente, moving one step closer to her fellow Scandinavian, with Benevente still hot on their tail. The only female driver on the tour, Stromoy can mix it with the best of them, but she's yet to win an F1 Grand Prix in what has been an otherwise successful career for the Norwegian. In lap 29, Stromoy managed to catch Anderson and pass him, moving into sixth position. Great racing from the MIC driver. No changes with just a few laps to go and Torrente clips a boy. An unfortunate error that will lead to a penalization as race commissioner Luis Ribeiro points the incident out to victory team. The final lap, Philip Schiap is on the last stretch to his first win in Chinese waters. And CTIC China have it. Schiap is the 2015 Chinese Grand Prix champion. They almost made it look easy. A well-deserved runner-up to Tani al Kamsi and Sammy Celio finally back on the podium after a long dry spell. Yeah, back to podium. It was hard work, wow. I pushed Tani whole race long but couldn't overtake. It was great. The results, al Rubayan holds on for fourth, Torrente fifth, but a two-lap penalty drops him to eighth. Stromoy ends up in fifth after starting way down the field. Anderson manages to salvage four crucial points ahead of Benevente, Force, and Zhong, with Roms and Larigo 11 and 12. Good job. Nice start, huh? <laughs> I was uh, very happy to finish today second, uh, safe, safe race, and bad luck for uh, Alex Carilla. Maybe when you go back in Abu Dhabi, I go more practice, understand the boat more and more. Will be a good uh, setup there in Abu Dhabi. And uh, we wait you guys coming to Abu Dhabi there. Welcome my home and see you there. Thank you. Yes, it's a great day for me, for my team. It's a perfect weekend, pole position, win the race. And uh, I don't know what can I say, but it's an uh, incredible win in China for me. It's my dream. It's on now. The driver's standings after round four. Xiap is now top dog. Torrente still holding on to second. 
Arubayan very much with a shot at a title on 36 points, as is Anderson and Stark with two races to go in the United Arab Emirates. Al Kamzi shoots up to sixth despite having missed the first two races. Heavyweights Carella and Celio joint seventh. The 21st Grand Prix of China comes to a close as the UIM F1H20 flag is passed on to Abu Dhabi, which hosts the fifth and penultimate round of the 2015 season. See you in Abu Dhabi.